In this short video, I'll be showing you when, why, and how you can use the Spearman's rank coefficient. So we use the Spearman's rank coefficient as a way of seeing if there's a significant relationship between two variables. Invariably, those variables have to be in a linear relationship. So what we're looking at is, as one increases, what one that's fixed, what does the other one do? And we want to test that strength of the relationship to see if it, if it didn't occur by chance. And for me, the best way to show statistical tests is by giving you some examples. So a statistical test always starts off with a hypothesis, the one that you want to prove, and then a null hypothesis, pretty much the one that you what the, the one that hasn't been proven. So what are you left with as a result? So in this case, we got we are doing a river investigation. So as the my hypothesis is, as the distance from the source increases, the cross-sectional area of the river will increase. My null hypothesis is that if I don't prove this, there is no relationship between the cross-sectional area of the river and the distance from the source. So any statistical test needs to have some variables. In this case, variable one is the distance from the source and variable two is the cross-sectional area of the river. So I've gone out and I've collected some data and you can see my data here. I've, I've done it at 18 sites. I've got the distance from the source at each of those sites and I've collected the cross-sectional area. Now what I'm going to show you is on an Excel spreadsheet how I would insert the data and what the results should prove. But before I do that, I want to show you what this, what this data would look like on a graph. And again, this will help to show you why we need a statistical test. So if I wanted to visualize the data, this is the data that I collected. This is how it's been plotted. So it kind of implies that there is a positive relationship, i.e. as the distance from the source increases, the cross section of the river has also increased. But what a statistical test does is to tell me the strength of that relationship, i.e between one and minus one, so one being positive, negative one being um, negative relationship. And it tells me if this happens, this actually is representation of reality or if it happened by chance. Because obviously with any statistical test, with any investigation, you do not go every millimeter of the river to do an investigation. It's impossible to do. So you choose sites and what you want to find out is whether or not those sites that you've chosen, the data you've collected, reflects reality. And again, before I show you um, how to do this in Excel, the various things that we need to consider is whether or not the data shows a negative relationship, if it shows a positive relationship, the strength of that relationship, so how negative or how positive it is, and are there any anomalies. So the Spearman's rank calculates it. Again, I can show this to you on Excel. I've put a link to it in the comments. So please follow and have a go. Okay, so what you can see here is that I've started to fill out the data. I've put in the null hypothesis that there is no relationship. I've filled out my alternative hypothesis, i.e. what the one I want to prove. And I've already filled out in variable one the distance from the source. So you can see here, I've put the first, so number one is where the first site was and number 18 was where the last site was. And you can see that with Spearman's rank, it, you have to rank the data. Now, if you want to find out more about how Spearman's rank is calculated. At the end of this presentation, I've included some links to some textbooks. Then as well in the comments, oh, sorry, in the description of this video, I've put in some various links for you to follow. Really, for your investigation, you don't need to understand, you don't actually need to show how you calculated it. What you do need to be aware of is actually why you selected that particular statistical test and what your result means which is why I've done this on Excel, so you can just focus on the actual result and what and the implications that result has for your investigation. So what I'm gonna do is put in the data for the cross-sectional area, and then you can see the spreadsheet calculates the number of pairs, it ranks the second set of data, and it does everything it needs to do in order to produce the um, statistical test. Now here, I've got my graph, and I would also change the y-axis, the title and the x-axis, so I can include that into my reports. But if I scroll down, this is the most important thing. It provides me with an RS number. That is what I'm gonna include in my report. Now, most importantly, both of these boxes have turned green. Now, because both of those boxes have turned green, it means I can say at a 99% level that my data, that there is a relationship between distance downstream and the cross-sectional area. In other words, I can reject my null hypothesis 
and accept my alternative hypothesis that as the distance from the source increases, the cross-sectional area of the river will increase. Okay, so let's just recap what um, I showed you in Excel. The R, the, my result from doing the Spearman's rank was 0 0.649. So what does that mean? Well, if I have this little graphic here with minus one being a perfect negative relationship, so as distance increases, the cross-section of the area, sorry, distance increases from the source, the cross-sectional area of the river decreases, all the way up to positive one, that there is a positive, pos there's a perfect positive relationship. By that I mean, as the distance from the source increases, so does the cross-sectional area. And naught being there is no relationship. My value sits about here. So it implies that it's leaning towards more a perfect positive relationship. And so what the statistical test tells me is that actually, is this value statistically significant? Does it mean that I can use this value and state at a certain percentage level that actually this, my data reflects reality. It reflects what the whole river is doing. So again, to recap, on my, on my uh, calculator, it came up with this, that my score is 0 0.649, and that both of these boxes at 95 and 99% statistical level both turned green. So, Spearman's rank ignores a minus sign. So if it was positive or negative, it ignores that. The result must exceed the critical value to be significant. So the 0 0.649 exceeds both of these values. If any of the cells turn green, I can choose the highest significant level to reject my null hypothesis. I can reject it at a 99% um, significance level. That means I am very confident that it reflects reality. Now, if it turns red, that's when you need to look back in your data, look back at any um, evidence, additional evidence that you've researched, Google Maps or anything like that, to think, right, why could have it have been disproven? If it was a river, was there a drought before I collected the data? If you're in an urban area, was there some engineering works? Was there a strike? Did COVID restrictions restrict people from going into an area? Think about what might have happened to disprove your hypothesis. And so in my reports, I would include that little table, maybe the scatter graph, and I would say something on the lines of, due to the results of my statistical test, I can state with a 99% confidence level or significance level that this data did not happen by chance. So yes, as the distance from the source increases, so does the cross-sectional area of the river. And here are the references that I've used. So please do have a look and find them. I've put the links to these various, um, these various uh, websites on the right-hand side in the description of the video. Thank you for watching.